Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink Your Beer and Play a Game and welcome to another episode of The Power Hour. Hello everybody, welcome to episode 122. Thank you for joining us tonight once again. Good to be back, a little bit of a break. Sorry about forgetting to send Bride the Files to keep us on track. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right we were both in full vacation mode jim started his the one week then it led right into mine so it just uh a lot w wasn't getting done the past two weeks i'll say so yeah we were we finally took a vacation and well i haven't done one in over a year so yeah it was just about time yeah it was definitely needed brian where'd you go i went to uh ocean city new jersey which uh for you beer drinkers out there it's a dry town very nice beach, and I actually mentioned to Jim on the last episode, I was kind of pissed how they uh, really shunned Wildwood on that list of, like, Jersey Shores, and Ocean City was actually number two on the list. I can see why. It's very clean, it's very family-friendly, but if you're a beer drinker and somebody wants to do something after hours, that might not be the thing for you. But it is a interesting little place. The beach is much nicer, I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been there? What, the Ocean City? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually at the boardwalk uh, that week I was down there. Okay, nice. Yeah, the boardwalk's a lot smaller than Wildwood, too. Yeah, and nothing opens until 4 goddamn o'clock, which <laughs> if you don't know that, you're just kind of wasting your time there, which someone yeah. might have done. <laughs> when it is open, I mean, it's very, like I said, very, very kid-friendly. Uh, my kid is for sure going to definitely be in the games when we were in the arcades he surprised me he wanted to do the original pac-man and like galaga because they have these did you, have you been in new arcades anytime soon they have like galaga and stuff like but it's uh and space invaders but it's like a light gun and you're shooting a oh giant yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 i played this I, yeah i've never saw that before i thought it was cool he loved the shit out of that and uh actually got in first place in one of his little racing like the motorcycle games that you get on the motorcycle so, yeah, it was cool seeing him, like, have fun with the games. And, of course, I had to get in on some of them. Well, of course, <laughs> yeah. It's a little gaming prodigy there. So, yeah, I was down to shore as well. I was down in uh, Strathmere, New Jersey, which is actually right next to Ocean City, mm -hmm. over the bridge. But uh, not a dry town, luckily, but we loaded <laughs> up more than enough booze for a week. So, yeah, uh, my little girl was actually enjoying that. She was enjoying the shit out of that uh it's like the plans for a zombies knockoff arcade game where it's there's zombies and you're shooting the water at the screen. Yeah. And she was surprisingly decent at that. I was like, wow, she's actually really hitting stuff. And she's collecting <laughs> the coins and everything. <laughs> and we played a little Jim. Mario Kart in the arcade, too. Jim, does that mean our kids are going to be Twitch streamers in the future? They can be whatever they want. <laughs> but they need a backup plan. Within not reason. like all these fools. <laughs> yeah. You can be a Twitch streamer as long as you get a college degree. I don't care what the hell you do. <laughs> Get a backup. Have Jim, a skill. Are you, are you kidding me? By the time they grow up, like, eSports will be, like, a degree in college. <sighs> it probably will. <laughs> We're old. So, uh, yeah, one awesome thing that happened while we were away at the beginning of this month, we finally hit a million views. So that yep. was all, like, that was something I was keeping good track on, and then, like, I didn't look at it, and I'm like, oh, shit. We are over a million, so that's awesome. So cheers, everyone who's been watching. We appreciate it. Yeah, I was basically checking, like, every other day, and then, like, I didn't check for three days, and then we hit it. I was like, yep, I missed it. Yep. So, no, that's awesome. We really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, them and subscribers. We know it's been a super slow crawl. Jim and I have been talking about a lot. Historically slow right hurting. now. Yeah, but... You know what? We still do it because we love you guys, and thank you for watching us. We really appreciate yep. it. Yep, thanks for everyone who sticks around and for all the, the new ones who trickle in. We really appreciate it. Yeah. So, Jambers, uh, you know, I know you've been on vacation. Other than arcade games, have you been playing anything at uh, all? I brought the Switch down and like because the nieces told me that they wanted to play Mario Kart. So I was like, all right, I'll bring the Switch down for that. And we never got around to it because my wife introduced an awful reality show called the circle to them which they got obsessed over while we're down there so yeah uh most of my switch playing wound up being me just playing some more mario and rabbits which i'm actually enjoying way more the more you get into it because like the more you unlock different powers and combos and crap like mm -hmm. that it gets way more fun so see jim when you get deep into games they can get really fun i get deep <laughs> no you don't you've I never been deep. deep in your life i get deep <laughs> Now, let me ask you, has this at all opened up you to maybe want to try other tactical 
shooters or whatever you want to tactical squad based shit well it's actually funny because like as i was playing that i actually started to play um because after i played through metroid fusion i wanted to like hit more of those ambassador games in the 3ds that i never really put any time into so i started playing fire emblem finally like my first fire emblem sacred stones and that's you know tactical rpg and oh boy that is a tough sucker because <laughs> good old-fashioned permadeath kicks your ass. And I'm trying really hard to not just go, fuck, I fucked up, restart battle. Fuck, I fucked up, restart battle. So, because then the game will never goddamn end. But, yeah. So, yeah, I'm actually in, like, a little uh, tactical bubble right now, I guess. Can't recommend it enough. Try the new XComs. I have the one Todd sent me. So, or yeah. he sent us. So, I'll get into that, too. That's one we're going to He sent it to the show, so we'll have to review it. Yeah. I mean, uh... Especially if you're getting into them. I mean, that's, to me, the gold standard of those games. So, yeah. But, yeah, besides that, not much because of vacation. And then I took a lot of their mini vacation this weekend where I got entirely too drunk three hours away from my home, which makes for a terrible hangover. And, mm -hmm. yeah, been busy. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, man, my gaming, I mean, like you said, last week was vacation. I didn't, I did basically nothing. And that first week you were gone... I was finalizing some footage for the 4th of July video. So, like, I, I really, like, here and there I've played a little bit of Dead by Daylight. But, like, I haven't touched shit. So, I'm definitely, this week is going to be a full gorge on, on gaming, getting back into it. So, yeah. Not 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 too much on my end. Sat around touching your P.E.K.K.A. <laughs> but, Jim, that's the most fun game. <laughs> it's the game I always win. <laughs> <laughs> Even I can't lose that game. Damn it. If you lose that game, that's a, there's something wrong <laughs> there, too. <laughs> just, just check out at that point. Oh, what am so, I doing wrong? Uh, so, so I spy with my little eye a uh, delightful little Hershey's Porter, which yep. is very divisive amongst uh, the beer elites. Yeah, Yingling, Hershey's Chocolate Porter. Um, as I'm drinking it so far, it's all right. You don't uh, like the, it real. You the don't like it that much. No, it's not that I don't like it. It's just like I was hoping for maybe more chocolatey. It's subdued. Really? Yeah. See, that's one of the things most people gave it shit for is it's too chocolatey. Really? Yeah. Is that a new bottle or is it a little bit it's, older? It's a little old. Okay. Because I was going to say, when I had mine, I was like, wow, this is a shit ton of chocolate. And yeah. Vanilla. Yeah. I mean, this is at least probably six months old and I'm just getting oh. it. So. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so right, I'm not... doing an experiment, much like Mad Elf. I'm aging it to perfection. Or yeah, to not perfection. I think when you do age it, you probably get rid of some of that sweetness. So, Yingling yeah, was probably... not meant to be aged. No, that's a shocker, Jim. <laughs> you know what? Actually, Jim, can we do an experiment with you? No, sure. My body's right. a wonderland. Since you are a Keystone connoisseur, yep, yep. I want to see. I want to have you do a frozen, like a really cold Keystone. I want you to let one just sit outside in the sun, get nice and warm, oh, and then I want to let I want you to let one age, not in a fridge, just in your basement, for a solid like six months, and then I want you to compare all three. This I can do. Actually, I already had many a frozen Keystone this past week when I was down to shore because we actually bought a uh, mini fridge. Because normally, when my brother and my family we all go together, we're just living out of like ice cubes and uh, coolers and shit like that. So uh, we bought a mini fridge off Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks, <laughs> and we couldn't figure out how to get the temperature just right. So like half the fridge, everything got completely frozen, and the other half took like forever to get cold. So yeah, it was a guessing game with like every drink beer I had. So there is some, there is some icy, chunky keystones in my week, in my past. <laughs> uh, well, Jim, speaking of interesting, I don't want to say bad, but weird beers, um... Have you seen this one, the Sunfest from 2SP? No. So it's in association with Wawa. And anyone who is from the PA area, the only stupid argument you'll ever hear, well, one of the stupid arguments is Sheets or Wawa, it's Wawa all the way. Yeah, it's not an argument. Yeah, and Wawa's even made it down to randomly Florida and I think a few other places on the East Coast. Yep. But um, I, Wawa's, I think, done... Other be I'm not sure if they've done other beers with 2SP. I think they did, like... No, that was Duncan that did a coffee beer with them. But there's... the 2SP is, like, a Delco brewery. And, uh... Ooh, Delco. Yeah. So, this is their Strawberry Lemonade Shandy. And... So, it, it might be a little tough to see. Super, very, very clear. 
when I pour the next one, like I'm trying to finish it because it straight up reminds me of a soda. The way it, it fizzes it, it, up it, it and then like immediately, yeah, it immediately just dissipates. It, it it's only four percent alcohol, so it literally is like drinking a uh, hard seltzer or like a hard. It it reminds you of like what a hard soda would be if it tried to be a strawberry lemonade. Huh. So um, it if actually you ever sounds had delightful. This, well, I was going to say, um, I uh, should have given you one when you were over yesterday, so you could say, ooh, this is refreshing. <laughs> yeah, that looks refreshing as shit. I'll say that right now. Well, that's what my wife, she's like, this is something I could actually drink because it doesn't taste like beer. So, it's not my personal favorite, but for someone looking for something refreshing, like Jim, it might be just right up his alley. I've got to say right now, the porter's definitely getting more chocolatey the further down in the glass I go. So yeah, it it might have just all all the sediment might have sunk to the bottom for you. Yeah, that's what it's seeming like. I'm just like, ooh, there that that was just like biting a chocolate bar right there. Mm. So Jim, hold up your glass real quick. All right, that's good. So do you have any more in that gla- in the uh, bottle? No. Okay. So you, so uh, yeah, nothing. You in may there. you may need a little more because I, I like you know how I like to spring things on you, right, Jim? I have a six pack, so yeah. Okay. So um. Everyone knows I like to spring things on Jim. But this is a fun little game. It's like a two-minute, three-minute game. Uh, I don't have any clever name for it. I'm calling it Name That Game or a pregame. I don't care what you want to call it. Um, Basically, Jim, it's easy. I have ten sounds or songs. Okay. You just, to not have to take a sip of beer, you just have to name the correct game. And if you can also name the exact stage or name of the song or moment in the game, then I have to drink. Yeah. All right. So I'll play um, your game. It, this one is all NES. It's NES stuff. I'll just say that. Ah, shit. Uh, <laughs> what I'll say is I gave you some gimmies, so you didn't think I was being unfair. Right. And then I threw in ones that if you get, I'd be absolutely shocked. Yeah. So, I mean, my NES knowledge isn't that great, so I'll be drinking a lot. Everyone yeah. at home, get your beers ready, too. All right, before we get to start it, Jim, here, I want you to take a look. If you can see the bubbles. What is the bubble? What is it, Grandpapa? So, it looks like if, cotton candy. So, if, But look how fast it's dissipating. Oh, yeah, that is going right by-byes. So it, it just straight up... I don't... Most shandies I've had, I know their heads dissipate fast. But now, look, it is down to zero bubbles, zero head. Yeah. <laughs> Much like with me, the head dissipates fast. Damn it, Jim. All right. So this will be a new segment I definitely want to do just because it's a fun, random thing. And you guys know I love me, my gaming music and sounds. Uh, this first one, if you're playing along, it's NES. Um, if you're watching the video, you'll see I do not have the name. I just have game one, two, one through ten. Um, each segment, each song is roughly 20 seconds. So I'll have to stop it at that point, Jim, and then you just have to give your best. So remember, hey, to you're not the editor. Dr- yeah, to not drink beer, Jim. Uh, you have to just get the game right, right. And then if you want me to drink, you have to be specific. I can't give you any gimmies because that, you know, you'll Fair. see. I get it. All right, so uh, let's give this a go and tell me right away if you can hear it. I'm hitting play in three, two, one. I can hear it. Mario 2? Nope. Fuck. Drink. It's three, isn't it? It's one. It's one? It's the end theme. Well, oh, shit. I only Bowser. ever heard that once, so. Yep. Guess that explains that. That's all right. All right, so next song. I'm starting. I'm going to get all these wrong. Sounds familiar, but I'm going to drink. Oh, come on. Wait, wait, Jim. Don't drink yet. Come on. Think about that. I'll replay it a little bit. I don't know why I'm encouraging it, because I just want to see Yeah, I don't know why you are either. Because this is supposed to be one of the gimmies, so I'm worried. Fuck me. Uh, I don't know. Mega Man? Just drink. Nope. Tecmo Bowl. Oh, really? I haven't touched Uh, that that since we reviewed it. Yeah, okay, so that's the uh, touchdown music. Uh, okay. 
All right, so if you're playing long at home, you better drink if you got it wrong. All yeah, right. I'm sure everyone right now is just shaking their head in disappointment. So let's keep going. <laughs> Number three. Contra. Yep. The main menu theme. There you go. All right, so I have to drink. See? Give you a menu. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. God. A very good gimme. All right, so I just had it repeat for you. Yep. All right, number four is coming up. The screen up. All right, punch out the training montage. Yep. Bri. <laughs> Bri. Don't. Bri. Don't. Easy. All right. <clears throat> All right, next one will be coming up in a second. <sighs> Come on. This is a tougher one. This definitely sounds like it's from a Castlevania. But I never make it far enough in any of them. Castlevania 1? Double Dragon 2. Really? The no boss shit. theme. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, Drink right. up. I'll be damned. It's been a while right. since I touched that one. Next one. Ah, shit, this sounds familiar. So I'll say Castlevania think? again. <laughs> nope, Legend of Zelda. That's really? Death Mountain slash Ganon's Dungeon. No, oh, man, I haven't, I haven't played the first Zelda in like 11 years. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'd never know with you what's how you're gonna know things or not so yeah it's right. it's all games i've played but just stuff that like i never this played one enough. i'll be shocked if you get i'll just warn you uh turtles three maniac mansion oh, i would have never gotten that okay. the main theme would have never yeah. played it oh, okay Man, you're drinking a lot. <laughs> this game. Yeah, I'm, my NES knowledge is lacking. I mean, I play stuff, but I've played it like once, if that. Except yeah. for Contra. <laughs> and Castlevania, apparently. Mary, Mario, two, 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 two. Mario 2, yep. Specific. Uh, World 1? No, character select screen. Ah, shit, that's right. All right. That's all right. You, you don't have to drink now. Yeah. Ah, fuck. This is this is one of the Mega Mans's. <laughs> ah, fuck me. Ah. Uh. Ah, <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Mega Man Two. Nope. Mega Man One. One. Shit. It's cut. Is it Wily? Oh, it's Cut Man. Oh. I put that there because that was one of your favorites you listed when listening to music. It's a good song. Wait, yeah. I thought Cutman was Mega Man 2. No. Or am I thinking Blade Man? Oh, well, this is Castlevania. Uh, but which one, though? Castlevania 2. Yep. And do you know the name? Bloody Tears. Yeah, there you go. And that'll conclude this first time we're doing this game. I have a whole lot of... Uh, Things set up for that gym, uh, like you'll see. I, I didn't want to make it too much of a mishmash. I want to keep it themed so yeah. your mindset can at least be in the right place. Mm -hmm. But uh, you got like three, <laughs> maybe you got, four. You got Castlevania. I got Castlevania. I got Super Contra. Mario I got Mario Brothers too. Two, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, so I got three. Thirty right. percent, <laughs> much like college. Thirty percent. <laughs> oh. See, Jim, that wasn't too painful for you, right? Nah, not too bad. I made you drink twice. Yeah. When I hit, I hit hard. I just don't hit enough. <laughs> That's the story of your life, Jim. Also true. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed that at home, let us know. Um, like you said, I'll, I'll probably have that be a recurring bit because it's just fun to... I want to test Jim's knowledge. <laughs> All right. Fun little game, you bastard. Yeah. So, uh, Jambers, what do we got from our awesome patrons this week? Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game where for as little as two measly dollars a month. You can ask a question. We'll answer on each and every one of these Power Hour podcasts. 
So first up is a leftover from 121 because he got in after we recorded. So from Burn Retinas. Batman and Spider-Man have the most success when it comes to super, eh, superhero video games. I thought to be like, superhero. <laughs> Collectively, whose lineup of games do you like more based on the ones you have played? Ooh, shit. It's a good one. That is a really good one. I mean, whew. that's tough. I mean, I got to go Batman just because Batman games have generally been good through like every generation yeah. where Spider-Man games really didn't get good until like the GameCube era. Uh, well, like PS1. The PS1 games were good. I enjoyed Maximum Carnage. It's all right. It, it, it's, it like, was, it's the best it's, of all the ones before the PS1. It, it's all. It was a little too tough for its time to make it enjoyable. It, that's another one. It's like another one of those ones. It's like it's too tough. It's like too. Like the enemies take way too many hits for their own good. Yeah. Um. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I have to. I, I think I kind of have to go Batman too. I was thinking that I'm like, yeah, NES Batman games were good. The beat 'em ups were all good. Mm -hmm. um, Spider Man, like I said, the new games are awesome, and Spider Man Two, I love that game. Um, it's actually kind of funny because it kind of went in reverse for a little while because like Spider Man started bad and then got good by like the fifth gen, and then pretty much stayed all right. Like it's a hard formula to screw up. Whereas yeah, Batman games yeah. started good, and then by, like, the PS1 era, they got kind of bad through, like, the PS1 and PS2, and then they got good again with, like, Arkham, and they've been decent ever since. Oh, once it hit that Arkham, like, the Arkham series was basically, like, <laughs> similar to the Nolan timeline of, like, oh, well, yeah, this is good stuff now. And now it's, uh, the games are questionable, I'll say that. There isn't many good, just like most Batman-related things these days. Not that good. But, yeah, no, the games, I, I'd go Batman for sure. Yep. But no, great question. question. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, <laughs> next up from Game Whisperer Dean. Uh-oh. Have any games challenged your sexuality lately? Uh, damn it, Dean. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Putting us on our toes there. I don't... Uh, no. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I mean, maybe that's maybe that's why I stay away from JRPG so much. The boys are a little too pretty in there. Got to do it for my own good, if you know what I mean. Challenge my sexuality. <laughs> no, and if any game does that to you, I don't know what to say. <laughs> don't ever take a game that serious that yeah. alters your life. Nothing, nothing, nothing's converted me yet, but never say never. <laughs> Damn right, it, Jim. If, right, if I can use your line, some people like their cucumbers pickled. <laughs> some people do. Ah. <laughs> Next up from Gamer Astral. Favorite video game character and why? That's a really good question. I've never actually thought about that much. Yeah, I never nailed it down to like one character. Shit, that is a really good question. Because I wouldn't necessarily put my favorite games with my favorite characters. God damn. Jim. <sighs> I'll do the cop out and say my favorite character is me when I create myself in game. <laughs> uh, uh. For, 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 the, for those of you listening to the audio only version, if only you could see the pain in my first. Give us a YouTube view just for the sake of seeing the pain in my face right, my face right there. Oh, gee. oh you. <sighs> Aside from that, I'd probably say Duke Nukem. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean I, maybe, I, I, maybe, I would... maybe Kirby, because you can't be in a bad mood oh, when you're God Kirby. Oh, damn it, Jim. I don't, know. I don't know. Kirby's just too damn lovable. Hero of Smash Ultimate, the only one who could survive, the parriage. Oh, Jesus Christ, Jim. All right, fine. The big uh, fucking Hurricane Titty Girl from Strip Fighter 2. I'll keep it on brand. Really? Really, Jim? Yeah, yeah there you go. You don't want Kirby, so now you get another answer. All right, I'll go Sub-Zero. Actually, who, a very solid choice. who is your favorite of all the fighting game franchises? Forgetting of your love of the game, well, who's your favorite fighter in all fighting games? I mean, as a character to use, probably Ryu and Street Fighter, but as, like, just a character? Maybe, like, maybe just, like, the Jack line from Tekken, because they're all mm. a little different. They're all a little goofier as, like, the series goes on. There's, like, variety to them. It's always like, oh, what's the story behind this Jack? So, hmm. Interesting. Typical, terrible. And plus, I love usual, flying in the air and landing on people. Neat. Terrible, like usual, but interesting. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you, sir? 
So Kirby and Jack. <laughs> and Big Titty Amazon Girl. Damn it. You don't even know her name. Give her respect, Jim. <laughs> Brian. Brian, come on. Damn, Jim, does she challenge your sexuality? <laughs> I mean, she reinforces some things. I hate you, Jim. I hate you so much. <laughs> That's what you get. That's what you get for that goddamn me line. So you wouldn't go with, uh... I mean, I was thinking, like, maybe, like, Max, but, like, he was like, well, he wasn't a one-and-done anymore, but, uh... I was gonna say, well, I mean, since you flip flop so much between Streets of Rage 2 and Star Fox 64, you wouldn't go Star Fox? I don't really care about the characters in Star Fox that much. That's right, you don't care about characters or stories or development. Right. Pointless. (laughs) Damn it, Jim. Jill and Chris, Jill and Chris, they're they're all top tier characters. Yeah, ones I've actually followed the progression of. Yeah, no, that that's a great question though. I it's funny. I don't have any it's like super strong allegiance to a one particular character. I see. I thought you were maybe gonna say Doom Guy. Yeah, there's like nothing. I mean, like he's that that's like almost like your answer, saying me. Like he's just basically your avatar. Exactly. That's that would be like saying <laughs> saying Master Chief. Like you know. At least there's a little bit more to him. But, yeah, uh, there's a lot more. Or or, or Dova Keen. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing Jim, to him. Jim, if you if you had the power to shout people off mountains, you're telling me you wouldn't want to use that all the time? I'd do it all the goddamn time. <laughs> I'd abuse the shit out of power. I would abuse the shit out of any power I was ever given, ever. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, a gym in Philly with Dova Keen powers would be very interesting. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I can just That's, imagine drunk Jimmy back in the day with fucking powers like that. Oof. Oh man! If I wish we knew someone who was a modder, and you know how there's those like Macho Man Dragon mods. I want to see a Your Face mod with the picture I use. We're going derp. It's a challenge. Someone out there. We don't have a lot of fans, but someone out there has to be able to do that shit. So please, we know somebody. We know somebody. <laughs> Pay him a few shekels. Let us make it happen. Uh, this mug qu- needs to be in Skyrim. That is a, a great, great question. Um, yeah, it's it's weird. I haven't thought about that much, though. Yeah, that's a really tough one, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really have a good, like, solid answer for that. Great question, though. I like it. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's what I'm going to have to think on. Yeah. And last up from Alex Perez. Are there any guilty pleasure television shows which you guys like to watch? No, I mean, I got that. sucked into Jersey Shore during its A-Day. Yeah, I mean, I've. I'm trying to think. I, for there was a there was a while there, uh, whatever year it was big, where every time I was hungover, it seemed like Bar Rescue was on, and I. Would oh, Bar that. Rescue was fucking great. That was one of my like go to. That guy John. Uh, John Taver, we're a tavern. Yeah. Yeah. Shut it down! You're making yeah. people sick. <laughs> yeah. That's every single episode. Every episode. <laughs> Um, that was like the closest, like I never, I was never someone who got into reality TV. The closest to reality TV was the ultimate fighter and the face off. Those were the only two. Um, yeah. I mean, like I watched, I watch a fuckload of cooking network, like we uh, competition shows and, uh, like WWF tough enough. Whenever that comes around, I'll watch it. I watched the, the first people never make it that. into the big leagues, but yeah, but, uh, uh, it's funny that question made me think of, and I think we talked about Jim. Do you get stuck down those Facebook? And it happens to me on Facebook more than anything. Of the rabbit holes, it's like watching someone restore an old lighter or something rusty, or like building something out of wood, like using the late, like, like somehow just like watching somebody like craft something or like restore something. I get sucked into a rabbit hole of like, oh shit, how are you gonna get that looking better? Oh yeah, I've fallen down a lot of those rabbit holes before. That's my probably biggest guilty pleasure to date. But yeah, like I said, show wise, Bar Rescue. I'm trying to think of the only other show that I would say is a guilty pleasure where I did. Yeah, I'm kind of shameless, so it's not like I'm really ever ashamed of anything I watch or say or do. The only show I I didn't willingly watch and I watched because of my ex was Friends. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> luckily never had to sit through all that. Well, let's say we weren't watching everything. <laughs> Get it? Coitus. <laughs> so, Jim, Jim, what were your high school shows like that? <laughs> right, I was watching a lot of Toonami. 
That's where I got all my G Gundam in my right hand from. Uh, Can turn yeah. stones into diamond with this baby. Well, not anymore, but there was a time. Oh God damn it, Jim. Yeah, that's a that's a good question, but yeah, um, TV is one of those things. My guilty pleasure is all in playing games, I guess. Yeah, I think like my biggest like if I had to like pick like an error, like when I was like um, in my late teens, early twenties, like. I was always, like, secretly ashamed I was still watching shit like Yu-Gi-Oh, even though I was, like, super into it. And I was always like, man, I'm too old to be watching this, but it's like, eh, fuck it. I just won't tell anyone. Well, it's funny, because I felt that way about wrestling, uh, going in... I forget what age in high school, but I was like, I I shouldn't be watching this anymore. I guess it's too... Re- it was also when it started getting really bad. Like, it was, like, at the midpoint of the ruthless aggression era. So, I was like, I'm done with this. And... Never really picked. I think like there was a, a small period where I would just like kind of stay in tune with it. Yeah, well, when, like the network first started, you would watch a little bit here and there. Yeah, well, that got me back into uh, like, oh, I'm gonna go rewatch my old shit. But then I was like, even then, I was like, man, this stuff doesn't age as well as I thought it did. Like my my fondness for for all the matches and stuff. I'm like, huh, okay. Like yeah, the disbelief, the suspension of disbelief and everything. It's it wasn't there. Like, I loved it as a kid, and I'll always cherish those memories. But, yeah, now watching it, it's tough. That's all I can say. Well, Bri, you'll be happy to know that thanks to the Peacock Network, most of the content hasn't been brought over from even the old network archives. So, <laughs> even less of a reason for you to have to worry about it. Yeah. Or, at this point, honestly, I always got the... You know the event I always got uh, suckered into was Royal Rumbles. Royal I mean, Rumbles, it, it's hard to mess... Like, I mean, they do sometimes, but it's hard to mess up a Royal Rumble. It's too good of a format. Like I still every so every couple of years I'm like I just want to rewatch all the Royal Rumbles up to a certain not like up till now but like up to a certain year, like I just end up rewatching them and they're all on YouTube so I just watch them there. Yeah, yeah, it's also that. Yeah, but no, good question. Yeah, definitely good. And yeah, that'll wrap up the Patreon questions for this week. So, if you want to be part of the podcast and get a question in there every week, please head over to Patreon.com/slash Drink a Beer Play a Game want to throw some more money our way then you can get a game review and some other perks so appreciate yeah. it everyone thank you See so you. much yep definitely thanks all oh jim speaking of uh i don't even know what to call this guy and i know it's a divisive thing and i don't know where people stand on it you would know better than me but uh it's a little bit old but we definitely want to hit on it anyway because it was big news oh yeah we, we can we can keep this short so yeah the amigo so a couple weeks ago uh there is an article that came out on ars technica by uh what's his name sam makovich sam makovich so basically the uh the developer portal like i guess wasn't password protected or something so he was no basically he get used in there. he used uh like archive.com like basically the thing that like archives all old websites oh, and, and right, when right, sites right. are protected like encrypted correctly you never see that old information, and this but. wasn't. So it was technically, it's like, it's part of the public domain now. And this guy pulled some information from it and wrote up a very detailed... I, I, I don't Super, even, it's, a, it's a long read. Like It's very detailed. Very, but, but it's not just a hit. Like It's being, I think categorized as like a hit piece when it's no no it's i mean tommy tallarico is calling it a hit piece but yeah. it's it's mostly fair yeah. because i mean here here's here's the brass tax but if you don't want to read through you know 1500 lines of you know text and babble and stuff like that basically the amico is the same is just as powerful as a budget 2016 smartphone yeah that's what it comes down to the controllers that are being touted as having all this integration in them they only have like a two megabyte limit, so you can have like a picture on there with like you know maybe telling you what directions to use or what the buttons do. So, yeah, it's not looking it's not looking good. Not not that you were expecting a spec powerhouse, but I was expecting a, at least more than what it's giving. <laughs> I mean, on one hand, if you look at what this thing is, it's a two hundred fifty dollar supposedly system. No, to start, I think that was a kickstarter backer like special deal oh. price i think it might be more so, than that jesus if i recall okay. i forget it's not worth looking up. i mean regardless and each game was supposed to be under seven bucks and didn't you say the one time it's some games are already over that threshold yeah that's another thing that came out like game some they're already because they uh when we talked about their little presentation in e3 
they were saying about how some games would be 20 bucks, and it's like, man, this was supposed to not cap out at more than $8 a game. So, mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. It's like, you want to say, like, good intentions were there for the system, but they are they were presented by a guy that just because he was in the industry, he didn't know shit about actual manufacturing, all the other ins and outs. And that's where it always falls apart. It's like great intentions, cool. Like you and I love games. We're never gonna try to develop it because we'd fuck it up royally. That's not what we do. Like, you need to hire the right experts to do this shit. Just being in an industry and being like, I made some music doesn't make you a friggin' expert. Yeah, I mean and he had some real developers with like some clout too, and a lot of people have left during the course of this, so that's eh, always a good sign. But uh <laughs> the Tommy Talrico situation where he he reminds me of how I would be because I get it. Like you're passionate about a project. That is a you're perfect going, comparison. You are going after people, and like I'm smart enough at this point to realize, like, dude, if I was the head of a company that's trying to release a system, you don't go after people. You don't like tweet about and they and like he's like oh he had a big semantics. tweet rampage. He was yeah. just like what do you call it? He's and it was like all poorly grammared. Like he was. It almost sounded like like I'm not. I'm not saying he was doing this like this, but it sounds like something a drunk guy would ramble. I was going to say, it sounds like it definitely seems like drunk on your phone. Like, you know what? Fuck this. Like, right. That he was, he was complete... threatening lawsuits and blah, blah, blah. And then he deleted all of it shortly after, probably because his lawyers were like, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, I love like he's like gotten to a tit for tat, like because he got called out using stock photos. And he's like, well, that's what they're for. And he's like arguing the legality of using those. And the guy's like, well. I'm legally using this stuff that you didn't password protect. Right. Because he was like threatening him. Yeah, you're like, you're leaking this. Inf-. He's like, it's not a leak. It's just there. I, I, one part of me feels bad that uh, something that did seem to have a good intention has gone so far astray. Um, but did anyone truly expect this thing to succeed like greatly there there is uh, like there is still a group out there that's like still hopeful for it like i get like it's got its backers and there's a group out there that's like hopeful for it and like thinks that like it could just be a fun family alternative kind of thing for anyone who put money into this i hope to god you get an actual product eventually because this thing's been marred by delays and all kinds of other bull crap and terrible pr during the course of the development of it so i don't like to see people get ripped off i mean we're still no i, I don't we're, like we're still that. waiting for the polymega to come out like you know people aren't happy with their atari vcs's for the most part um, you know, the Coleco Chameleon and that whole debacle that never came out. So you almost question, is there a thing to being a legit AAA developer out there and you give real product? I mean, the, you want to root for the small guy and I completely, but how many times have we now seen Kickstarter backer, Patreon, whatever, like these things, w- what has ever worked? What was a success story that you're like, yeah, that's the one I can point to. That was a individual games back back games because for the most part you probably won't be burned that badly, you know, even if it never but comes systems. out. But systems, but systems. There's, I don't think I've ever heard of a Kickstarter success no. system. The VCS is probably was VCS Kickstarter. I can't. Remember. I think it was. So like, it actually came out and actually came out to full retail. So, I mean, people think it's overpriced for what it is, but it actually came out. So I guess that's a success. I think I the mean, was a Kickstarter too, and like you had the game stick from back in the day, and on but that's live my point. and like, all those other goddamn things. Just crossing the finish line isn't, and like delivering on this stuff is what I mean. Like just just saying, like oh, like an it. over like an overwhelming success, nothing. Yeah, and that's why I'm like, like I said, I get it, and I love that people want to have the passion. I don't like that. Like some people can just be easily manipulated by like you get a, someone charismatic who's like trying to get backers you get people in there when you don't have something and i get it like that's how most projects worked i mean shit we did fundraising for things in college for that that project thing and we weren't even at the like a legit even design concept stage of that shit and we're trying to get funds for like what we're gonna deliver on i get it it's a tough circuit but our uh, prototype broke while we were doing it yeah so it's I, I, I do wish it that for the backer's sake, they at least get it so it can come off the shelf. But goddamn, like people, 
Tommy and all these other companies, stop interacting on Twitter. Hire somebody to just run your shit Hire for you who's professional. PR. That's all you gotta do. Like even it can't the poly, be that expensive. Even the Polymega has been smart enough to not have a peep on Twitter since March. Yes. So, like, they haven't, I mean, that's not a good look either, but at least you're not digging the hole further. So, yeah, so, yeah Tommy's been very vocal. And I mean, what do you call it? Like, according, like to Pat and Ian have been obviously the forefront of, like, following it and pretty much bashing it the entire time. And, like, you know, according to them, like, Atari Age is, like, in love with it because, like, you know, Tommy's, he's, he's a legend in the, in the video sure. game sphere. But he has definitely done a lot of marring of his personal reputation with this. I mean, uh... Go big or go home, I guess. I don't know if he was expecting to make this. My whole no, thing is... I think is, it was. I think he just, like he, like you said, he was not prepared for what it actually took to develop a system. No. Yeah. It's, it, it, you get in over your head super, super quick when you realize all the ins and outs, the this, the that, the true cost of things. I mean, high... And, of course, no one expects a worldwide pandemic to hike the price and yeah. everything of everything, all production materials and shit like that, but... Even beyond that. I mean, this was announced three or four years ago, too. So, yeah. For the people that care about it, I want to see it come out. For people that are hating on it, like, I never want to see something fail. But I want this to be a yet another cautionary tale. If you want to develop something, hire the right people. Like, just because you have the thought of it doesn't mean you have the, the skills to deliver. Like, like Jim just said. I don't care who you are. If you're a company that has any kind of real reputation, hire a social media person. Like, that is one of the first things you should be doing is, like, instead of, like, getting a website. You can design your website easier than you could manage a goddamn social media. Like, yeah. if you want legit, like, monitoring. Like, just just put out press releases if you're going to be pulling this bullshit. Like, don't mm -hmm. even fucking have a Twitter at that point. Yeah. So, no, it, it, it is interesting and... When is it supposed to come out, do we know? Who the fuck knows at this point? I think it was supposed to come out. I think it got pushed to either late late fourth quarter this year or maybe early next year at this point. I don't even know anymore. It's been delayed yeah. like three or four times. So, I mean, we'll I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not dipping my tip in there at all, so I don't really care. But it's a fun <laughs> little thing to follow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Speaking of new tech... Know, yeah, I was going to say, well, but first, let us know if you have any strong feelings for or against them, Eco. Just I, I would actually love to know if anyone that, like, follows us is, like, invested in it. And, like, you know, if you are, please let me know. Like, I know people who are, like, they'll just buy, they're always interested in, like, weird niche little, like, systems sure. and failures and crap like that. So, that's fine. But, yeah, no, I want to actually hear from someone who has, like, a real legitimate, like, passion for this. Yeah. But, no, like you were saying, uh, speaking of new tech... Uh, it was announced a few days ago. The Steam Deck. So the Twitter on fire. It and I mean, how much did you look into that thing? I, I looked into it pretty good, like all the, uh, the all the specs and all the um, the price, the three different price tiers and shit like that. I mean, it, my biggest thing with it is. Like I think it does have expandable memory, but like I for if it's it's weird because like. It's claiming you can play, like, AAA games at, like, decent rates, you know, with the tech involved. Sure. But it's, like, you're only going to get, like, an hour out of it. And if you only have, like, six, like the 64 gig model, like, you're going to put, like, two games on there if you're lucky. If you're putting, like, AAA titles on there. Like, it seems like it's a thing that could be a really cool emulation machine if you, like, put Windows on there and, like, basically hack it and shit like that. Or, you know, you put Windows on there and throw Game Pass on there. Then, boom. It's a fucking awesome little thing. But... Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think it's going to be, like, the Switch killer that, like, people love to throw around because they're two completely different markets. But I, I, for me, with anything with Steam and hardware, you have to show me that you can make something people want. Yeah. Because the Steam machines bombed, the Steam controller bombed. Anything hardware-wise Steam tries to do just never takes off. So this, I think, has the best chance because they, I think they learn from their mistakes because they're not releasing, like, 17 different models. Like, they're releasing one model with just different price points for memory. So sure. Yeah. It's a way smarter way of going about it, and there's actual hype behind it, so... The I just problem... I just think, like, I, it, it's kind of weird because, like, as a portable device, like, if, if it's doing what it's selling itself as, it lasts, like, an hour and you fit, like, two games on there. So it's not the most practical thing in the world, but depending on how you want to use it, then it can be kind of cool. But then it's also the argument of there's a lot of emulation machines out there that are way cheaper, too. 
Like you can get like the GPD XP Pro, which can almost do the same thing emulation wise, and it's a lot less price, so you can fit more on there. I mean, the thing is, the the whole thing of like it, it only lasts an hour. I don't think it'll only be an hour. I think that's it's, an it's hour. like two, it's like two hours. I think it said if depend if you run like a triple A game something like that. But that's yeah, that's my point is if you run the triple A game. I think what it opens up though is getting getting Steam, getting Xbox Game Pass, getting all the other stuff. So for someone like you who probably isn't playing triple A games anyway, right? Like now you have access to a a, a library that Switch could never compare to. Oh, yeah, so, by far. So that's where you're like, okay, literally 10 cent games, whatever, free to play. You could play four hours, and the problem is, for whatever reason, since it is getting labeled as a Switch killer, that's automatically, now you've created camps of, like, the Nintendo dorks oh, versus God. the PC dorks. It's already and, started. And that's the problem is, like, I don't think, I, I can guarantee you they didn't want to be labeled that because they're just going to go out there and say, like, hey, we have this thing. I think this this hardware is going to be way better than the Switch in the sense that oh, well, yeah. regar- regardless of, like, you know, the battery life, what it can offer is going to be undeniably better. Um, the, the memory thing is a weird one because if you're using Xbox Game Pass, if you're using Steam... Um, if you get a triple A game, you don't need to hold seventeen triple A games on there. Like you need to hold one, play it, get rid of it, and play the next thing. Right. I mean, it's if you need that much memory, then use your home console. But if you're playing on the go, like you, if you're playing whatever, Mario versus Rabbids, I don't even know how many gigs that would be, but yeah, you're man. like suckered into that. And then you might have a whole bunch of cheap little like indie games. So I love I really do like this. This would be something I'd even be interested in, and I was just looking at the models. I'll wait for it to be proven and cheaper, but, like, yeah, like, that. being able to play Steam in any way other than my PC, and even though I got a monster PC now, like, I don't love playing on my PC. If I could play some of those games on the go, that would be awesome. And you talk about indie developers, that's the place to go if you're an indie developer. And this is where that whole mindset of, like, having a true PC portable... That's why I think it could be the... It'll last longer if it is proven than Switch will. Like, eventually Switch will... Oh, they're adding the OLED thing. Like, Oh, yeah. I mean, like, we didn't even... <laughs> we weren't even around for the Switch OLED version, which... It's such a joke. Yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> like, it, it's but just you know, another but you know what, Nintendo P- P- slapping you in the face with their deck and saying, you know what? you're you know going to eat no, this. No, 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 no. Here, here, the, 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 like... Is it, Come on. is it unnecessary? Yes. Is it an unnecessary upgrade? Yes. It, like, would it be nice to have if you didn't have a Switch or if your Switch is broken? Then, yeah, sure, fine. But people overhyped themselves into thinking, too, that this was the next Switch Pro, too, and shit like that. So, like, Nintendo never said this was, like, the next-gen Switch and crap like that. They were just like, oh, we have an announcement. And then, like, here, a couple new features if you want it. So, but, it's but, not yeah, entirely you're being on like, Nintendo. You're, it... Come on. It's Nintendo being... Like, to think Nintendo actually gave fan service... How long has the Switch been out for? Uh, since 2017. So, four years, and they can't come up with a pro, a better pro version? This is a slap in the face with their decks and saying, you're just going to eat this, and then we will release a pro version after you guys buy all this, so that you have to now buy another one. Yeah, to and be they, devil's advocate, it's good it. business. I, but... It's good business, but I'm saying it's it's the continual shitty customer service they're known for. Well, I mean, look, there's still... It, then don't buy it. Like, the people well, who are going to buy it are the people who are going to buy it anyway. So, like, the Nintendo fanboys who buy up anything Switch-related and buy all the Switch variants, they're going to be buying it anyway. The ones who buy every single shovel world shitty game that comes out for the Switch, they're going to buy it anyway. So... Like but yeah, Jim, Nintendo's think like a, Nintendo's uh, great at milking. They're great at milking the simps. They, you sure. know what they are? They're, you know, they they are like the Pokemon of goddamn game consoles. Right? They know how to they know how to milk the shit out of their two to three fans and crap like that. And that's how they no, stick but around. That, but that's my point. I'm saying. But they're like, also yeah, outselling the, like the casual market. They're outselling everyone anyway. So they're in no hurry to upgrade anything. But you know why they're doing that? My whole point is what they're who they're really fucking over. I mean, the simps are gonna do it. Oh, I, God damn, I hate that you use word simps. <laughs> um, the the people that are gonna buy it anyway, I'm not worried about them. 
the market, the only reason they're there is because they still are the kid-friendly thing. And it's the kids that are begging their parents every Christmas. And like any good parent, like your kid's going to be begging you. You're going to get home. You're going to be like, don't you already have a Switch? Yeah, but this is the upgraded one. But it's like, yeah, but didn't you just have that one? There's no, what's the word I'm looking for? It just like nullifies their previous systems. And it just it just is like a constant... I, I don't like that ticky-tack shit. Like, you know they have the capability to give you something better, but they will always do this to their customer base. And I, I think, regardless of the quality of their first-person titles and whatever, and if they're great businessmen, great. I think it's just a shitty tactic to do over and over again. And, yeah, enough people aren't going to be smart enough to do it, but that's one of the things that always, always turned me off about how Nintendo's been. Like they, well, you know what? Shitty you know, to you know their what? people. You know what? The fans do it to themselves. Cause you know what? I'm, I'm losing fucking care for the end user when everyone in the world bitches about Skyward Sword and the twenty five dollar amiibo and the locked thing. And, and what happens it. today comes out. Every single person buys it anyway. Who was talking shit on it? So. Oh, I've given up on those people, but they're the ones. They're the tw- as you say, simps or whatever. I'm talking about, I feel bad for the casual market of parents who, like, have kids, and they don't know no better. They're just like, whatever, I'm just going to keep getting it, because they're not going to get their kid-friendly shit through Xbox or PlayStation, so it's got to be Nintendo. So that's why I want the Steam Deck to kill it. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no, no, I do I do think the Steam Deck's cool. Like, I'm in no hurry to buy, like, sure. like you said. Steam, prove yourself to have something worth buying physically, but... Yeah. You know, in the meantime, it, it, I mean, it's the closest thing you're going to get to, like, true portable competition to the Switch. Like, Sony's out of the market, so at least there's Did something else out there now. Did they say when it's supposed to come out? Uh, I, think only, I think it's coming out pretty soon, actually. I was, I was see, I was assuming it was going to be, like, a Or, no, I, it, was Christmas it 2022? Time. I think it's, like, oh, early okay. 2022. Yeah. It, it would have made too much sense to have it Christmas time. Maybe they couldn't. So, yeah. Um, what do you call it? Steam Deck. Pre-orders are open now, and it says it's going to be shipping in December. So, there you go. So, yeah, right around Christmas time. Smart. Right. We'll see. I mean, I'll wait till summer of next year, see how they're doing, see if they're actually holding up. And, like you said, that would be one I w- I'd consider getting. Let's put it that way. Yeah, no, it's a very interesting system. Yeah. Um. All right, Chambers. So... This was interesting, and uh, yeah, we can spend just a little bit of time, but Japan Studio was removed from uh, Sony's website. Here's the deal, Jim. I I know I'm stupid when I come to a lot of these things. What would I know Japan Studio for? Um, Like I talk about all the time, like Hot Shots Golf, the Ape Escape series. They worked on Parappa the Rappa. They worked. They like co-worked on a lot of stuff with uh, Team Ico. So stuff like Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, uh, Last Guardian. Uh, they worked with From Software on Bloodborne. They made the Gravity Rush games. They made Knack, which never took off. Uh, Astro's Playroom was their most recent game, and I guess pretty much their last game. So no, they were they were like, and then like more like quirky stuff like Patapon and Loco Roco. So they were like always like. They were they were like they made a lot of games for PlayStation. Like they were like a stalwart for them. So the article's from pushsquare.com, the link is below, but they basically so I didn't know anything about this and they talk about like it was a messy divorce. Was this like an uh, ongoing contentious thing with PlayStation? Dude, to be honest with you, I have no idea. Hmm. I mean, that sucks. It, it doesn't I mean, it seems like that what's being picked up is Xdev from Europe it will fill in the role. Um, yeah, Jumping Flash, which I know you wouldn't have heard of, but that was, like, even before Mario 64, like, that was the first kind of, like, whoa, 3D platformer. Gotcha. Uh, they did Wild Arms, so the Wild Arms series, shit like that. Similar to the Miko, I just feel sad for people who truly love this developer, and, like, it sucks, or studio. Um, now they can have a home at the Steam Deck? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think, from what I can tell, I think a lot of, uh, what do you call it, the people who are in there, uh left and moved on other stuff anyway so i think it's just uh put a fork in it i think she's done jim or is xbox gonna buy them up now that would be interesting (laughs) it's it'll literally be uh whatever year it was 2001 when shane mcmahon comes on or when vince mcmahon comes on the wcw titan tron i've got team i've got team japan in my hands Mm -hmm. (laughs) that would be some shit and they just like drop like 
Every, like, uh, yeah, everyone's golf, like, eight and, like, Parappa four and, or yep. Parappa three. They're just, like, coming out gun swinging. A new ape escape out of nowhere. <laughs> Come on, Microsoft. Do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. <laughs> I, yeah. And, I mean, like I said, I do feel bad. I hope they do surface somewhere else. Yeah, because, so. like, yeah, I mean, when I first heard it, I was like, who's, like, everyone's like, oh, man, like, Japan, you know, you know. You know, this the dev went down. I was like, who are they? And I looked up their games, and I was like, oh, shit. Like, <clears throat> these guys were prolific for the Sony brand. So, yeah, it's like, it's an old stalwart just going bye-bye. Kind of sad. Yeah. So, yeah, let us know in the comments below. Are you, Like, I, as you could tell, didn't know much about this studio, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, let us let me know your, like, everyone down below, tell us your favorite game series from uh, Japan Studio. Yeah. There you go. That's uh, some interaction for you. Jim, speaking of uh, studios, <laughs> I thought maybe you took a break from our page and was writing for these guys. Um, from uh, Double Fine, and we have the tweet linked below. Uh, it's a little older, but there was a whole bunch of uh, kind of hubbub, if you want to call it. Oh, that, oh there's a hubbub. Thank God yeah. for the Steam Deck because it shut people up about this topic finally. But we're bringing it back. Yeah, so, um, Jim, did you know if you beat Psychonauts 2 with the Invincibility Toggle on, you still beat it? I mean, I guess. You see the end of the game, don't you? So, yeah, apparently, and not apparently, we've talked about this topic through various other things. So it, People, it's, it's once a year, someone makes some kind of claim about what it really means to beat a game or what the developer's doing. The end of the game is with difficulty, blah de blah de blah Mike Matei famously had it like a year or two ago. Yeah, Double finds like the other side of the coin this year, going the other route about. Uh, it doesn't matter how you beat the thing. game if you beat it, like. Fi- I, here, here's where my problem came in. It was a follow up tweet to their yep. sub tweet. My problem too. Where they go, quote, uh, "Excuse me, I beat Sword Guy Serious Time on a no hit hard mode, and if I didn't do that, then I don't expect you. And, like, can you even comment on things if you're not Diamond 6 rank and Shooty McBlam? I don't think so. Cool, bud. You're so cool. Such a snarky <sighs> asshole. It seems like something you would write, Jim. No, I I, I would <laughs> not say that. Cause that's, Jim, you no, are that's, snarky. No, that I am snarky. But that is like someone saying sports ball. And I said this before, too. Uh-huh. But, like, it's like anyone's like, oh, man, I play footy McSports ball. Like, shut the fuck up. You're not witty. Well, this and isn't then wit. It, this is you being a nerd and trying to think you're being witty, but no, you're just being annoying. Shut the fuck up. But it's like I feel like they had. It's like a situation like us where you run our Twitter. I just have access to it, but I don't even go on it. But it's like some asshole. It seems like wrote that tweet, and then they follow up with, "All people should be able to enjoy games, all ages, all possible needs. It's an ongoing and important process for our industry and a challenge we need to met." They fucked up. End of the day, <laughs> we want you to have fun, to laugh, to experience a story that affects you. On whatever terms you want. Fine. There, but he, there's your good point. You like, that's, to, that's the, the point. Why before. did you have to do, like, this is where, like, you clearly just had somebody who thought they were being witty, and they threw a shitty comment. Like, for someone like Jim and I, we can throw shitty comments out there because we're nobodies. Right. You are a goddamn studio catering to your audience. You don't have the right. You're not even big enough to be witty and shit talking down to your folks. And I know it's like trying to humanize you, but like, dude, just don't. And it comes off so corny. But that's that's all besides the point. We've talked about this many times. Why the fuck does do people care so much how other people play games? And who is these who are these police that are like if I said, hey, Jim, I beat Castlevania, cool. are you double-checking? Like, well, did you use safe states? Did you use the emulator? Did you use original hardware? Like, who the fuck cares? Like, did you see the bot? Like, what are we talking about here? Like, what, do you, what, what fucking social points do you need to say, I beat it with the original hardware versus I beat the game on my computer running an emulator? There's that, and here, like, I think I've said this before. I am so goddamn sick of the people who use the argument of, well, you didn't learn how to overcome adversity by not beating this video game. <laughs> Motherfucker, it's a video game. Adversity. Jesus Christ. Like, I... Uh, 
Now, um, do some people build their character by being able to beat video games? Sure, fine. I'm sure there's a few out there. Whatever. You're, you're not changing your life significantly by being good at video games or, like, beating it on the hardest way or beating it with no upgrades and making it harder on yourself. Like, you're just wasting your time. Like, like it's not it's not a litmus test for having, like, a real skill. Like, if you can make money off it, then, yeah, sure, you made a, you, you made a real skill out of it. But for the most part, it doesn't fucking matter. It's still just a goddamn video game. I... Like, there's you're not, a you're difference. Not, you're not a better person by beating a video game, every single video game, on super hard and fucking shit like that. Like, shut up. Stop. Well, that that's my point. You're, you're not, not building a... character. If anything, yeah. you're more of a shut-in and you're more annoying now. Shut well, up. But here, here, here's the the only kind of... And it's not even a counter-argument. It's a supplement to what you're saying. And there's if, a difference... If you played on easy mode, then you didn't really play it as they expected. Excuse then me. why the fuck did they throw it in the fucking game, then? Well, no. I was going to say... Yes, I agree with everything you're saying. The difference is, like, I'm not taking away... A video game could be very important to someone's development, whatever. It's a personal thing. If it helped you get through a hard time, a breakup, through COVID, whatever. Yeah, it's a great escape. Yeah. <clears throat> great but that's escape. what it is. It's an escape. It's an entertainment. Like, if you're... If the quality of you as a person... If you ever tried to, like, go out and earn social points by being like, you know, I beat Silver Surfer with no hits, like... That doesn't mean anything. Like, don't measure your worth with that shit. And especially don't shit on other people. Like, I just want to know the guy that goes, or girl, who goes out and says, I beat this game, but I use, invis like, invincibility. Like, who would even know? Like, unless I've never once had someone tell me they, were they played a game or beat it. I never had a probing question for, like, how did you do it? I've, I've never followed up with, well, did you cheat during it? <laughs> One, Who's I just off? went, okay, cool. Yeah, like, I don't get this mentality. And maybe you and I just don't run those circles. Like, fine, if you were going, if you're in Billy Mitchell's world and you need to set world records and cheat like he did, fine. Yeah. You, yeah. Whatever. Like, then it, I guess it matters. If there was a monetary thing, if there's esports. Yeah, like, yeah, obviously, like you're saying, like, there there are parts where it really does matter. If you're, like, you know, trying to be a speedrunner, if you're trying yeah. to be in esports, if you're doing shit like that, then yes, of course. Like, of course you don't want to be a cheater and you don't want to, like, you know, count, like, bullshit scores and crap. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the same argument of, like, I, I used to give you hell but i couldn't give you too much hell we'd play halo you weren't cheating you were just like you knew where everything was and you were using the cheapest method to keep killing us right but like that like you said it's in the game just like every time call of duty came out there was some exploit to go under the map or go above until they fixed it it's like well it's there it's not cool that you're using it especially because now it's affecting other people's ability to play the game the right way but we're not talking about that. We're talking yeah. about single player campaigns where it has zero effect on anybody else. I, I truly like if anybody listening has a big issue with this, I would really want to know what is the drive. Like, what is the issue with it? Like, I because I, I no bullshit said I can't understand why it matters so much. It's like if someone was like, oh, I just listened to this album and they're like, did you do it on vinyl or did you do it in your like? Yeah, how, how does it affect you that someone beat a game using inv like invincibility mode? Yeah, like, like they're always like, "Well, why don't you just watch the cutscenes on YouTube then?" Well, maybe they don't want to. Maybe they bought the if they still enjoy their time with the game. Then what the fuck's it matter? And it's like, yeah, like I saw. I love the arguments of like someone's like, it's just a waste of time to play the game on an easier invincibility. But then I saw somebody else was like, "Well, it's just as much waste of time to spend." triple the amount of time on the hardest difficulty to be able to beat it because you still get the same ending that's where i go okay now like if you have a game where you can only get a true ending on hard mode different story like you're right. not like whatever but like yeah like there's an argument there too like you're almost you're guaranteed wasting your time to play it on a difficulty that's way too hard for zero additional replayability right Here, here's another argument playing video games in general is a waste of time true yeah it's your escape but guess what escapes are a waste of time all escapes are escape, a waste of time is getting yeah. pissed drunk every night a waste of time yes is watching every season of a tv show a waste of time yeah. yes it's entertainment and it's how you try to escape from the never-ending hell that is everyday life yeah. so reading any fiction novels that's a waste of time yeah except for hentai but 
Beyond the point. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like yeah. So like, what the like? It's just fucking like. Why why do you got to gatekeep nerd shit? Like what? Like who the fuck cares? Uh, I, I'm trying to find something in my head where I go like I would care, but like you you love Streets of Rage, and if if somebody was like. Oh yeah, that game is like I, I can't. I even... mean, street, here's that. There you go. Back to Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage three, broken game in North America. I beat it exactly one time. You know how I actually beat it by fucking hitting player two start button on like the second to last boss in the game, so I had way more lives just so I could see the ending. So did I legitimately beat the game? Probably not. But you know what? I saw the fucking ending and I was happy with it. Yeah, I that that that's my point. Like. And and let me ask you, do you at all feel any kind of like, is there a chip on your shoulder like, I do want to get around to beating it the right way? No. Does that eat at you at all? No. Like, it didn't even eat at me when I had the time to want to try and do it like that. Yeah. I was happy. I was so beaten down by that game. I tried so many times anyway. I was just happy to see the ending no matter what. But, yeah, especially at this point in my life, God, no. But even back then, I didn't care enough. I saw the ending and I played the game enough times that I definitely got my money out of it. Yeah. So. In single player modes, that should be the ultimate. Like you don't give a fuck how else anybody else. Like you, you just talk about the game. In multiplayer, I don't like anything that could be considered cheap. But that's not what we're talking about here. Um, games should be accessible to everyone. But that doesn't mean every. Like if a studio decides, though, I also am on the same point. If I'm a studio and I develop a game and I don't want to have an easy mode and I only want it to be a hard game, Fine. that studio shouldn't catch any shit. Like, you need to make this game easier. I don't believe in that. Yeah, like, I hate the arguments, too, of, like, oh, what do you call it? Souls game should have an easy mode. Like, if they no. don't have an easy mode, it shouldn't have an easy mode. Like, fuck you. No, no, they absolutely should. Just, like, uh, that's one of the arguments in a lot there of... There are four billion other video games out there. Play something else. Yeah. Well, there's a big argument out there for a lot of multiplayer games that aren't doing like what Call of Duty does, uh, the ranked matchmaking, where you get in lobbies of these multiplayer games with someone who's clearly like way too good and you suck and they they just aren't implementing that, that matchmaking. Yeah, that is going to turn some people off. So that might not be the game for you. Yeah. You know, it'll be fun. Trade it in. Yeah. Mm. But no, I, I truly want to know, is there anyone listening? Do you have an actual issue with us? Like with how people play single player games? And but then again, like you, you said, care? and also like you said, if you're going to be, you know, also <laughs> for accessibility and stuff like that, don't be a snooty little cunt about it either. Yeah, definitely. Come on, man. What what the hell is your name again? Double Fine? Get Double your Fine. Shit together. You're not smart. You're not witty. You're not Wendy's. Don't do that shit. Oh, God. Witty Brands on Twitter. Ugh. But even then, like, just, like, and even, like, Double Fine, let's let's be honest here. You're not that big a studio either no. that you can get away with doing the shit like this either. Let's so. calm down with your second mm-hmm. thoughts. Slow your tits here. Yeah. All right? Come on. Build yourself a better game. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> all right, Chambers. Uh, so, recurring bit. I always love this, and I love what you put up here. So, we got a Which is Better a trash can punch versus a keg of natty light jim explain to the people to college yep explain to the people what is trash can punch right trash can punch is a delightful little concoction where you basically get a cooler or whatever large size apparatus of your choice sometimes a trash bag in a sink sometimes a trash bag in a sink sometimes a bathtub you never know Mm -hmm. depends on how much of a degenerate you are and you, can I also just interject? It some other folks may know this as jungle juice because I I yeah. always knew it as jungle juice. That's why when you first put it, I was like, I think he means jungle juice. But yeah, no, you know what? I, I couldn't remember the fucking term okay. jungle juice. So yeah. like when I was looking it up, I was like, I'm just seeing trash can punch. So I was like, all right, I'll just go with that. Yeah, yeah jungle juice. But so good. So ahead. so big ass apparatus. You fill the shit out of it with like three main ingredients: some slices of fruit of your choice, some sugar water. And a fuckload of Everclear. Well, yeah, so so yeah, fruit th- punch, fruit punch, Everclear, and some slices of like orange or whatever fruit of your yeah. Choice. You usually throw orange, maybe cherries. Sometimes you could do like lemons, but like yeah, some fruit of whatever type. Like Jim said, uh, I've always seen Hawaiian punch be the big go-to. Yeah. Um, but Everclear was a, a must-have. But a lot of times you you don't stop there. It's also a smorgasbord of like. 
vodka. It's the, Bacardi it's the bottom, 151. It's, you know what it is? It's a flaming mo. It's the bottom of every bottle you have. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And they throw a lot of Everclear in there because it's like you know five bucks for a fucking gallon. Yeah, Everclear is like you. If you don't have Everclear, you're not making it right. But everything else in there is optional. But if you want to make it stupid, like fall down drunk, you got to throw in 151. Probably a few different schnapps. Uh, vodka, of course, because you're not going to taste it anyway. Um, but yeah, you basically put that all in, the, like Jim's saying, the sink, a cooler, whatever. And everyone dips their cup in there. Or if you're a little fancy, you might have a ladle. But eventually that gets lost anyway. Yep. Um, but that versus a keg of Natty Ice where you could also just say Keystone because they're say basically Keystone, the same. Say, <laughs> what, what, bush, you could say Bush, yeah. whatever. Basically whatever the your most frat, piss water cheapest keg you can get. Whatever frat basement uh, keg you want, Whew. throw it in there. So I would say the Jungle Juice or Trash Hand Punch is better because when you go to a party and you see that, or if you're the one making it, you know the night's going to be a little different. Like, you know something. I'm not saying it's better or worse. You just know it's different. Like, your, your mentality of drinking just changed. You're like, oh, I'm not just chugging cups and cups and cups. Like, I, I'm going to get more, a little more fucked up in a different kind of way. Whereas every single kegger you go to, party you go to, you used to kegs of shitty beer and... With that, you'll ultimately always get uh, probably... The beer pong table, the flip cup table. Yep. Yeah. When you see that jungle juice, I mean, something's going down. So someone, uh, Someone's probably getting pregnant. You know, something, something's happening that night. Whereas, yeah, the, the keggers, you're probably just... Yeah, you just got your beer pong, you got your whatever. Um, that's a special night. So when you see that, <laughs> you also now, now post-COVID life... I, I mean, I'm sure most college kids don't give two shits. You'd probably be like, wow, that's yucky. But, like, uh, shit, where we went to college and in the basements we were and in the places oh, yeah. having people puke in the goddamn liquor bottles because they can't hold their shit. I mean, we've seen we've seen a lot. So I was always a fan of seeing the jungle juice. Like, um, that would just mean, like I said, different kind of night. So I always like that. I think that is better. Um I mean, it's more accessible, but I I like that more. Yeah, I think if you're the host, then just having the keg's better because... Of course. Whenever you break out the jungle juice, your place is getting destroyed. You are a brave motherfucker if you're making the goddamn jungle juice. Or the trash can punch, what have you. But yeah, if if you're going to a party and you're expecting to see a shit show, the jungle juice is where it's at. Yeah. And I will say, if, as a, if you if you want to time travel, that is also <laughs> the best way to do it as well. I will say, as a host of many a party, um, if I'm making jungle juice, there's probably also now I'm guaranteeing it's probably more mixed gender and not just all dudes. Oh yeah, true. Um, and with the keg, your worry with the keg is is it enough? Because you only get two situations with keg. You either lift it at the end of the night and it gets done tapped way too early, or you uh-huh. go, how the fuck is this thing still half filled? What is uh-huh. going on? It's never in between. And you know there's like going to be a million. The thing with jungle juices, you, there's never anything left over. With kegs, you're going to find a million cups with half filled beers all over the place. Because people fill their beers, they take a few sips, they leave it, and they say, ah, oh, whatever, I'll just go get in our keg. Jungle juice, you usually keep that cup with you. You're not leaving it. So it's a little bit less wasteful, I guess, if that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to have less gyms piss- pissing everywhere. <laughs> yeah, if you're a little less stingy, then what do you, if you're a little stingy, then jungle juice is the way to go. But, of course, if you have the gyms around, there's always, there's always about like a 25% chance of the jungle juice being either pissed or puked into, too. So. <laughs> Yeah. Jim, there, this begs a question. Next time uh, we get together with our buds, do we make some jungle juice? I mean, we are long overdue for a guy's weekend and getting everyone together, so we might just have to say fuck it and we live some old times. I mean, we filled how many ba- hotel bathtubs with ice and, and our beers, so maybe this time we bring a trash bag and do jungle juice? I, I think it would be smart. I think it would be better than having, like, you know, 15 bottles of goddamn uh, Fireball, <laughs> so... <laughs> Those little uh, hotel trash bags don't hold many bottles and cans. Yeah, no, they do not. <laughs> making making four thousand trips to the ice machine. And if you are someone out there who has never had the pleasure, if you want to call it pleasure, 
of trying jungle juice or trash can punch um maybe you dodge the bullet and the taste is always different oh that's the thing like just like you when you go to someone's never know what house, you're gonna get like and they're like here's uh whatever potato salad or pasta salad depending on the cook it's so different and yeah you'll find someone like you know, we have friends, like, when they pour certain drinks, it's all going to be liquor and just a splash of something. You get those. I hate those. You're like, you want it to be sweet, and you know you're going to get fucked up. But you'd have some people like, I only need a little bit of Hawaiian punch with all this other stuff. And you're like, this doesn't even taste good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, there's been some times where you take that first sip and you go, oh, God. Oh. <laughs> the upside? You don't really taste it after the second or after the first uh, cup either, but but you're always gonna re- those nights are generally gonna be more like holy shit. Remember that night? I'll say they're, that they're they're memorable for how much you don't remember. Yep, exactly. <laughs> you you hear about your night secondhand, <laughs> Jim. You've you've had that a lot, haven't you? Yeah, bro. I've done that a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> let us know in the comments below. Um, what do you right, I've had the I've had the advantage before of being the guy who passed out too early at the party, but people just kinda look at you and go, mm, you suffered enough. Yeah. You you once you're fully out, I don't think we've messed with you that much. It was always when you were in that Mortal Kombat fatality stage where we would definitely fuck with you. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> where you're somehow still on your feet, but you know like the littlest bit of wind is gonna teeter you over. Flights are on and no one's home. Yep. <laughs> You're one of a kind, Chambers. Oh yes, yes, I am. I am a man who has made many a many a decision. Jim, some would call you the RVD of drinking. So let us know what you think. Which is better? Um, everyone, I'm sure, has different stories of that. So comment below. Leave us your best jungle juice stories below. Yeah. <laughs> Jim, uh, too many games. Are we gonna make a? Are we gonna be the hotel no, room with jungle no. juice? Eat Jim, my ass, Jim. No, not doing that shit again. Oh, maybe we I have do to that. make it to the after party. Fuck, Jim. I, I think we need to be the jungle juice uh, hotel room. Come on, that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> we just won't play fuck the deal, or you'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. Hey, the beer page made jungle juice. Oh shit, <laughs> this gonna be a shit show. Jim, special ingredients just Keystone. <laughs> <laughs> suckers <laughs> uh, all right chambers so our last topic and our reoccurring bit which uh is overrated underrated i threw it down here i'm covering it all the donkey kong series from the original donkey kong games through country to now it's obviously tied in it's a week late but by the time you're watching this uh later this week we have donkey kong 64 coming out I don't need to say much more because you guys have probably guessed our opinions on that game. Um, but it got me thinking. You know, you look at the original Donkey Kong and what it meant for arcades, you know, introducing Mario. And then Donkey Kong Country and I think most people love the shit out of that game. But then where it, where it followed after that. And I'm not talking about him as a character but I'm saying the actual Donkey Kong, strictly Donkey Kong games. Um, what do you think? Are they overrated or are they underrated? I guess it's kind of hard to say overrated, wouldn't you think? Like, I mean, the original, like you said, the original Donkey Kong and even Donkey Kong Jr., they were like huge revolutionary hits for the arcades. Donkey Kong Country, that whole series, beloved. Donkey Kong 64, like you said, a little, a little divisive, a little divisive, some could say. And he, then you have, like, the goofier ones, like Donkey Kong and Jungle Beat, which, they're charming. I don't think they're what people really wanted or expected at the time, but they have a charm to them. And then, like, they've had a redemption arc, basically, with, like, Returns and Tropical Freeze, which are very solid, you know, platformers. So, I can't really say underrated. Or, no, I can't really say overrated. I guess I'd have to say underrated, just because even the games that people don't talk about as much are still pretty good. And I would probably say, with the exception of, like, Donkey Kong, Math, and 64, the series for the most part is just quality. So, I don't know how you can really say overrated. Well, I'm going to say overrated. No, oh, alright, let's hear it. Um, well, you helped guide me a little there, because I had to go devil's advocate a little bit. Um, Donkey Kong, for what it's, for as good as it's known for, I feel like I still put a lot of like what 
has given it the love it has was from the documentary. Um, I mean, it was one of the biggest arcade games of all time. No, no, it definitely was. It's, But it's one of those games where... <clears throat> It's like, is it as good as we remember? Putting aside historical, like, I think that game, the historical impact, that holds the biggest weight of all the Donkey Kong games ever. I think that's a fair statement. Yeah. Um, Donkey Kong Country, You, I've said many times, that was one of my favorite Super NES games. Going back and playing it, like, I think the visuals and the audio are really what made that game so timeless Mm -hmm. i think going back and playing it i don't think it's as good as i remember as a kid it's not harder than you remember yeah it's well it's harder but it's also just it's it's fine i'm gonna use your your terminology it's fine and like but like take away like imagine if that soundtrack was dog shit visuals were a little like more goofy like would we have such a connection to it I, I tough, don't tough to say. I don't think so. And then sixty four, terrible. Um, all the right. Other, don't spoil the reveal. <laughs> all the other games since then, like you're saying, even if they're charming, even if they're fun, they're not that memorable. In the annals of gaming history, no one's going to be talking about the Conga series or the, you know, all the other racing like specific for them like they're gonna be like oh yeah they're fun once you play them but like really it's donkey kong donkey kong country and wherever you fall in 64 and when i look at those i go you know it was uh revolutionary with donkey kong the country i just even internally have an issue saying like is it that good of a game or do i just really love that soundtrack like and i can't like like i would love to be like i'm just gonna play this game on mute and see how much i enjoy it or something mm. like that, and I don't know how much it holds up. Like, it was a good game, um, but I think Donkey Kong as a character is more important than him as the series. So, like I said, may, might be controversial. I th- I tend to think overall he's a little bit overrated, and it's why in most of the time when you think of first-party Nintendo things, I don't see Donkey Kong in that, like, Hall of Fame next to, like... Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Super Mario. I hold all those games in a different esteem than I do Donkey Kong games. Let's put it that way. All right. So, yeah. I I would say overrated for that. I think the fondness for the character, the that first game, what it did, and even the country series, outweighs what how fun the games actually are. Fair. Because, I mean, I guess if you ask, like, you know, someone 15 or younger in this day and age, what do they think of Donkey Kong? They probably don't care about it. They don't. They, they won't care. And honestly, it. if they play the games, we'll go. Eh, eh, it's okay. Like I, I just, I don't think any of the games age as well as we th- like to think they do. All right, I'll give you that. Yeah. So, I go overrated on that. Like I said, I'm probably in the uh, alone in that in that mindset. I know a lot of people love it, but. Yeah, and I love me Donkey Kong Country. I've said it many times. Yeah, and it's funny because like Donkey, like you, arguably like Donkey Kong Country two and three improved on the gameplay, but oh. people remember them less because like soundtracks and visuals are still good and maybe in some ways improved, but they're not that first one. Yeah, I, I mean, you and I have said many times, what makes or breaks a game's legacy is you never hear of a game that's like always widely remembered without a great soundtrack. Like right that. If Super Mario Brothers sounded like goddamn, I don't know, name whatever the worst sounding NES game is. It, it would sound like Karate Champ or something. Yeah, like you would never, it, it would be like, it's still cool, but there would just be pieces of it missing. So, yeah, no, that's, I, I'm going over it. So I'd love to hear what you guys think below. I said I'm probably the one that's going to be told I'm wrong, but I would love to hear why. Yep, now yeah, give us your reasons. So, with that, Chambers, how did that uh, Hershey's Porter t- treat you? Yeah, you know what? Pretty good. What What did the uh, the beer snobs say about it? Too chocolatey? Too chocolatey. They think it's, like, kind of uh, a cheap gimmick. gimmick, like, to be with Hershey's, like, blah, 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 blah. You know, you know how they are. It's PA. PA and PA. It, it's too sweet for them. They're, like, you, like we said many times, if it's not just pure <sighs> tasting like beer, God forbid it's sweet. Wah. 
Not a tree's asshole means garbage. Yeah. So I like I see I said I really liked those and I liked to me I got a lot of vanilla out of it too and the yeah, chocolate was yeah, pretty one, sweet. Yeah, once I got to the, like the actual flavor, like yeah, I was like, "Oh, okay, this is this is tasty. It's like nice little nice little dessert beer, nice little snack." Jim, were you in Flavor Town? I would be. <laughs> yeah. This uh this Sunfest, the only thing I'll say is it's nice how easy it goes down. I don't... Glowing review. I, I don't... The flavor's fine. Like, have you ever had that strawberry lemonade uh, smoothie? or Not smoothie. Whatever the drink is from Wawa. I forget if it's a smoothie or an iced tea. Like, it's one of those, oh, like, I know what you're talking things. about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Monica got it before, and it's a little bit on the sweeter side for me. But um, if you're looking for some... Let's put it this way. If you're not a beer lover... This is right up your alley. If you want something that's when it's really hot out, probably a good choice. But if you, uh, yeah, if you're expecting anything and knock your socks off, it ain't going to do it. I'll just say that. Not a good night for the beer snobs on the power hour. (laughs) So with that, we want to say thank you so much, everyone who's been listening, especially to our patrons. Um, If you have anything you'd like to talk about, always hit us up on Twitter. And if you haven't already, please make sure you hit subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening to us on iTunes or Spotify, subscribe to us, leave us a comment, and even better yet, leave us a rating if you can, the five. We'll always respond and and, uh, interact with you all. With that, we want to say have a good night and cheers. Cheers, everyone.